You know, if your house has a five foot overhang like the houses when I traveled through Switzerland, you probably don't even need gutters. This umbrella is kind of like that. A big old golf umbrella is like a massive overhang on your house. When it rains, nothing's getting wet. But on the other hand, most American houses, like mine here, have a two foot overhang. Isn't this cute little totes umbrella nice? This is out of my wife's purse. This is probably what it's like to have a two foot overhang on a house. <laughs> now we're getting wet. It's doing okay on my face, but you can see my pants are getting wet, my arms getting wet. It's not doing nearly as well. Now what happens if I have a one foot or maybe even no overhang of my ass? <laughs> We're getting soaked. Today's video all about gutters. Let's get going. Hey guys, welcome back to my house under construction. This is the real rebuild project, my family's personal house that I'm building. And today is the day that the seamless gutter guys pulled up on the job with this machine right here. They're actually making out of this, it looks like a pasta machine, but they're making six inch half round black seamless gutters for my house. And we're doing those on all parts of my overhangs. Now in today's video, we're gonna get into all the nitty gritty details about gutters, what you need to know about K style versus half round, how to know what size you're gonna need, what accessories do you want, including screens. And we're gonna talk about cost as well. Before we get into all the nitty gritty on gutters, let's first talk about why you need them. Now at my house, I did a two foot overhang everywhere in the house and I'm a big believer in overhangs. They do a lot of good for the house. But even with an overhang, you're gonna notice this typically during construction. This is a drip line and it's really easy to tell exactly right above us where that drip edge on the roof is because you're gonna see this line in the dirt where all the, all the kind of pebbles and rocks are fully exposed and it's almost perfectly two feet out from the wall. Now that drip line means that that water, when it runs off my roof and is dribbling down, it's dribbling down right here. And what happens is often we get a lot of splashback. You can see it really well in the back of the house where I've got some white siding and I've got less uh, foundation showing, but even right here where my foundation's coming out of the ground, see all this dirt that's on top of my foundation and even on top of the brick? That's basically splashback that's happening. Now I spent a lot of time and effort to waterproof behind everything. You can see I've got this copper flashing right here that's a through wall flashing. But even if I've got everything waterproof, I'm still gonna number one, get my house really dirty. And if I didn't have a house that had all those details perfectly behind it, that's where a lot of rot happens. And in fact, the house that was here previous had some serious damage from lack of gutters. That water would splash back and hit that wood siding that was on this house. And over the years, it absolutely destroyed the bottom section of the house. That also leads towards pests coming in. When that bottom of the house is wet, that's what's gonna draw those pests into the house. So gutters do a lot of good for the house, but it's not just the house as well. Now I'm slab on grade here, but if you had a full in-ground foundation, Think about all that water right here running right down along that waterproofing. We're gonna put a lot of load on that waterproofing for our foundation. Whereas once the gutter is put in, we've got this whole run of gutters right here. We're gonna have a downspout right in the corner. And in this case, it's kind of downhill on my house. It's gonna run away from the foundation, but we could also use some French drains, some drain tiles, other things to really move that water away from the foundation. So that's a really good thing. Okay, next let's transition and talk about the different types of gutters and the options. The two main styles that we see throughout the US, the biggest styles, or actually probably the biggest style, is what they call K-style cutters. If you look at the profile that it makes, it kind of looks like a K-shape. That's probably the most common style of gutter. But on my house, I was kind of going for this modern farmhouse look. I really wanted this half round, and I also wanted to match my roof style. So you're gonna notice that I've got black painted aluminum that's gonna match the painted steel on the top side of my roof. And I really like that half round look. Now, when you order either K-Style or a half round, you're gonna have different sizes available. Typically it's gonna be five inch, that's gonna be kind of the main style, and then you can upgrade to a six or maybe a seven inch style. There's not actually a huge amount of difference in cost uh, going to the bigger size gutter, but there's definitely a difference in looks. You know, sometimes a big gutter can overwhelm a house if it doesn't need it. On the other hand, a big house with a really tiny gutter can not look so good either. 
But there actually is a difference in the water moving capabilities of this half round compared to the K style. So on this house, I really don't have any runs longer than, I think Lionel, my gutter installer, told me I've got like 30 some feet is my longest run. So I don't have a huge run. I don't have massive amount of roof. But with this half round, I wanted to upgrade to the six inch to make sure I had enough water moving capability. A five inch would have been on the line. So I've got six inch on this job. Had I gone K style, I probably would have gone with five inch gutters on here. Now the difference though, typically when you go from the K style to the half round is gonna be things like this. Check out these hangers right here. This is actually a burger product. That's an aluminum powder coated hanger. And you can see that hangers underneath the gutter. It's actually kind of an architectural feature. I really like that. When you do K style gutters, most of the time it's gonna be a hidden hanger where there's gonna be a bar that actually slides into the gutter and then a screw that the gutter installer is actually gonna screw into your rafter tails. Now, a couple things you wanna think about as a builder, I really like to do solid fascia. So in this house, underneath my hardy uh, five quarter by, I guess that's a five quarter by six fascia board, I ran solid two bys in between as my, sub, what they call your sub fascia. So for me, that meant that I could really put these gutter hangers wherever I wanted. I wasn't limited by putting those right on rafter tails. If you're building new, that's a great way to go is use solid two by for your sub fascia. But if not, you gotta think about where those screws are gonna go. If you've got a rafter tail that you're gonna need to screw into, you don't wanna screw just into your fascia, you actually wanna screw into that rafter tail. Now, when you're doing half rounds, you're gonna end up having those typically on somewhere between a two foot or maybe a three foot on center. It's really depending on how much weight you've got uh, and the installer's preference. But for me, I, went, I think we ended up doing uh, a three inch on center pattern for this front here. And I think it looks fantastic. Again, I really like the black metal for the hanger. And then you're gonna notice there's a strap on top of there as well. And that's what's actually holding that gutter down into place. Now let's talk cost for a minute. Uh, Lionel, my Austin installer, was kind of giving me the, the general range. And I think this is gonna hold true. I always hate to talk about cost because if you're in uh, Duluth, Minnesota, it's gonna be a very different cost to install gutters than Boston, Massachusetts, or some other major metro. But K-style gutters, you're gonna typically see those in the US somewhere between maybe six and $11 per linear foot. That's each run of foot on your house. And then when you do these half round gutters, the materials are not any really more expensive. It's really the same steel, but less people have the machine that's gonna make a seamless gutter. So your installer might actually have to get them in 20 foot runs from his supply house, let's say, and have a seam there if he doesn't have the machine or he could actually order it from Burger up to like 30 some feet where they could ship them out in long lengths to the job site. But what really costs a little bit more in half rounds is the labor. You know, Lionel told me if this was a K style gutter, he'd probably finish this house of mine, which is 2,800 square feet. I've got like 220 some linear feet of gutters. He probably would have finished it in about a half day. Whereas the half rounds, it's gonna take them about a full day to finish this job. So that being the case, it's gonna end up costing somewhere around maybe 11 to 15, 11 to 16 dollars in today's prices. Now keep in mind, uh, this is during the kind of post pandemic. I don't know when you're watching this video. Metal has gone up uh, quite a bit in cost, not nearly, not nearly as much as lumber, but I suspect in the coming years, commodities will come back down to kind of pre um, spike prices. So I think that those numbers are good. But remember, if you're actually bidding this today, you might wanna add 15 or 20% on that just based on the cost of metal today and availability. It's a really hot market. There's a lot going on on the job site. Now let's switch gears for a minute and let's talk about K and half round versus box gutters. Now I've done some box gutters over the year. Typically it's, uh, it's because an architect specified and wanted that really boxy look on the front of the house. But for me, when I've done box gutters, my gutter guy, Lionel, did not have a seamless machine. I don't think there's a whole lot of box seamless machines out there. So I was limited to 20 foot runs before I had a seam because that's the break that I had in town available. My roofer has one of those. Uh, and there's also a sheet metal and company in town that has a 20 foot break. Now I could have ordered that from Burger. I actually didn't realize that until today when uh, they're on site with me helping this video. But typically box style gutters, you're gonna see more seams because there's not a seamless machine. You're gonna have a break maybe as little as every 10 feet if you only have a 10 foot break to maybe 20 feet, or if you order those in special from Burger, you might be able to get that, like I said earlier, that 30 plus run. But again, that's kind of a specialty item. It's usually only an architect that specifies. To be honest, most of the time, 
I don't even see gutters on plans that I'm getting from architects. And for most builders, it's just a line item on the budget. We don't have a lot of specs. We don't necessarily know what clients are interested in. Sometimes it even turns into an allowance. For me, for my house, and what I'd recommend for you, gutter everything you can. I'm doing basically everything at my house except for my awnings. I have some awnings on my gable sides of my house that have metal roofs on them. I'm not, I'm not guttering those because I'm really just trying to protect the door themselves. But everything else, every other part of my house that has a two foot overhang, I've got gutters on every part of that. You also need to think a little bit about how your downspouts come down. In my case, on my two story sections, I brought my gutters, or pardon me, I brought my downspouts all the way down to the ground. I didn't want to dump them on a lower roof because I'm already kind of at the edge with this half round gutter in terms of capacity going to that six inch. So I didn't want to dump an upper roof into a lower roof. I do see that and that's not a bad design, but I really wanted to bring those all the way down to the ground. That also will allow me later to add some piping if I need to, let's say to bring that water to the street or to our storm sewer area. And that's really a good way to go to make sure that you're moving that water away from your foundation and away from your house. Okay, next up, let's talk leaf guards. Now I'm in an old neighborhood, I have existing oak trees and it's really important for me to get leaf guards. If you were in a cornfield in Iowa, maybe you wouldn't need leaf guards, but I'd recommend if you've got any trees on your property, highly, highly recommend leaf guards. It's not typically a really expensive item, um, but there's a little bit of labor involved and I'd recommend having your gutter guy do that. So have them put that in the bid to start with. You're going to see leaf guards vary in cost, maybe as little as uh, you know two or three dollars per linear foot, to maybe as much as six, seven, eight dollars per linear foot. The leaf guards that I'm using here are from Berger. When it comes to screens, though, the biggest thing that I would recommend is a linear product. I would not recommend any of the sponge products, or I've even seen some spiky products. Those are really not a great choice. They're gonna end up holding the leaves and holding the water in your gutter system. You really want an actual guard that snaps into place. There's a lot of different options when it comes to guards and, and a lot of different uh, marketing that I've seen out there. But if you've got a guard that's gonna snap into place and keep the leaves out, but have an air gap that's gonna allow that gutter to dry out in time, that's really, I think, your best choice for gutter guards. And like I said, I'd highly recommend having your gutter guy actually install those at the time of the gutter install, much, much easier than you trying to get up a ladder and do it later. Now let's talk for a, a minute about metals and option types. Now I used a basic aluminum for my gutters. I could have used a metal, and in fact, I thought about actually using the same metal as my roof, but one issue with, with the half round gutters that I wanted was, most of the time you're not gonna be able to put a very thick metal through that K style or that uh, half round gutter machine without doing some fussy adjustments. So I went with kind of standard aluminum. This is not a very thick gauge aluminum, but if you really want gutters that are gonna last, let me show you this. My buddy Wade Paquin and Brent Hull use this type of gutter all the time. Now this looks like lead coated copper, which is a pretty traditional product. But the problem with lead is you've got some, some kind of questionable environmental issues and you don't necessarily wanna work around and solder that lead. This is called Freedom Gray from Burger. This has been on the market a long time. And this is basically a tin and zinc alloy on top of the copper. So what you're seeing here is actually a very thick gauge copper that has that on top to make it look kind of silver or like a lead coat, but without the environmental issues. I really like this gutter. And in fact, I think this is probably a lifetime gutter for a house. However, you have to be really cautious about dissimilar metals. And I was a little bit worried about voiding my Sheffield Metals warranty on my roof because my roof is steel and this gutter being copper, it actually would void my Sheffield Metals uh, warranty by having copper on the house. That's something to think about. If you have a shingled roof, if you have a tile roof, if you have a uh, concrete roof, Man, copper is a great way to go. I mean, we're talking about a lifetime product. And in fact, when I was uh, traveling through Europe a couple years ago, I went to a supply house in Germany, a roofing supply house. And I was shocked that they actually stocked copper gutters at the roofing supply house. And through my translator, I said, you know, do you have standard steel or aluminum gutters there? And they said, why would we do that? You know, through kind of broken English. Copper is the way to go. You know, it's gonna last a hundred years. And I love that philosophy of longevity. I couldn't do that here. I think that these gutters are gonna last a long, long time. I'm gonna get decades of service out of these. But had I had my druthers, I would have done something like this Freedom Copper or even a real copper. 
have to think about patina when it comes to real copper. In the south, it tends to brown and not quite go green like it does in other parts of the country, especially where we get freezing weather. But man, super, super longevity. Guys, I think that's it. Hopefully you learned something today. Big thanks to Lionel and his crew at Central Texas Metal Gutters. Man, great crew. I've used Lionel for the last 15 years and he's done all my gutters in all kinds of different styles. And big shout out to my friends at Burger Building Products. Everything that you see on the house today uh, that we've done gutter-wise is a burger product from the coil stock to the hangers to the leaf guards, even the caulking and the screws and the rivets, the black rivets came from Burger. So talk to your gutter installer about using Burger on your products. And I'll put a link to their website below if you wanna learn more. They have some really, really cool architectural products as well as uh, gutter components. Guys, if you're not currently a subscriber, hit that subscribe button below. We've got new content here every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow me on Twitter or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.